everybody and welcome back to Robert's Reviews. This is my second ever Robert's Ranked video and today we're talking about John Green books. I love John Green with the, like, to the bottom of my heart, I really do. Uh, I love all of his books, I've read all of them and uh, ranking them was really difficult. Particularly because I don't think any of them are bad, but I, I have to figure out which ones are better than other ones, which is really hard. Um, hopefully if you're watching this you've seen you've read John Green books but I will be going through them uh, telling you which one's my favorite which one's my least favorite and giving brief synopsis it shouldn't take too long um, but hopefully you guys agree with me if you don't agree with me please put in the comments down below let me know what you guys' ranked are there's only six of them so that way you all can let me know what you guys thought um, <clears throat> please do uh, one quick note I will not be including Let It Snow in the ranks however I have read it and I love it it is a lot of fun um, the issue, I'm, the reason I'm not doing it is because it's got three authors. Um, as you can see, it's got Maureen Johnson and Lauren Miracle as well, which is great because they're good. Um, and it's a great book, lots of fun, uh, pretty interesting book. Uh, and the, the movie is also pretty good, which I have a review of the movie on my channel if you guys want to give that a look. Um, uh, it's a good book, but I'm not going to include it in the ranks because it is only one third John Green. However, I will be including Will Grayson, Will Grayson which is half John Green and half David Levithan. Uh, Levi, Le Levithan? Yeah, it's Levithan. Um, <clears throat> which is a great book, and also half John Green, so I'm going to include it. Without further ado, let's begin the ranking, starting at number six with my least favorite John Green book, and this might surprise a lot of you. Turtles All the Way Down. Turtles All the Way Down is a great book, uh, but it is not at all my favorite. It follows a girl who has... <clears throat> basically germophobia essentially and sh it, it's good it's fun it's, it's an interesting read but it's definitely not my favorite uh, this is what the cover looks like for first edition I also have a signed copy I'll show you the signature in a second um, under the dust cover is just a black um, book with uh, a turtle uh, a little little bit it's not a turtle it's a reptile on it and uh, silver on the side here um, and in the book of course uh, in the first page is my signature by John Green. I have three signed books. I have a book signed by John Green, I have a book signed by Hank Green, and I have a book signed by my favorite author, Stephen Chopsky. Um, but yeah, the reason I don't like this book a whole lot is I think it spends a little bit too much time on our, on our main character here that doesn't... In which I, I get makes sense that we would, but it's still not at all my favorite. Uh, I just didn't quite connect with the characters here as much as I did the other ones, and it didn't feel as much of a coming-of-age story as the rest of his books, which I think is one of his best qualities in, in an author, is he's really good at coming-of-age stories. Um, but still, check out Turtles All the Way Down. It is fun. It's his most recent book, um, and it's it, it's still good. It's a good book. It's just not as good as the other ones, especially in terms of, like, the tone. The tone is not very comedic in that one, and there's a lot of science stuff that doesn't really quite make sense, like a lot of his other stuff, where at least like in other books he goes through and explains why it's sciencey. This one's like, oh, and there's a scientist, and it's like, ah, okay. Not my favorite. Coming in at number five, An Abundance of Catherines. This one was my least favorite for a long time, and I've reread it a bunch of times. I think it's on a bookmark in here somewhere. I do, yep. This is a ticket from when I was in um, uh, It's a Wonderful Life. Um, but yeah, this is the cover for it. This is not a first edition. Uh, it might be a first edition paperback, but that's it. Uh, this is his, I believe it's his second book that he wrote. Um, and essentially it follows this guy, his name is Colin, I believe. Um, I'm assuming, yeah, it's Colin. Um, and Colin, and I think it's his friend, his name is Hassan, but uh, yeah, it's Hassan. I'm so good at remembering things. Um, Colin and Hassan, they go on this road trip because, uh, he has dated like 16 people named Catherine. And he's trying to figure out why, and in the end he figures out, he's trying to figure out this algorithm as to why uh, he likes Catherine so much. Like, he's got even got graphs in here, like this, that I think were really interesting. I don't know if you can see it, there you go, yeah, over here. Um, he's got, like, graphs and stuff trying to figure out this equation as to, like, what is love, and why can't I find someone who's not named Catherine? And it really is interesting, and honestly, it's, it's so much fun to read. Um... It's in no way a bad a bad book. If you don't like math, you're unlikely to like this book and understand it quite as much as other people. I like math a lot, so I did 
um, enjoy this book quite a bit. Um, and I didn't really like it a whole lot the first time around. I just, I don't really know why. It was hard to read and hard to get through. Um, but I've now read it like four or five or six times. I've read all these books at least like five times. I read them like once a year. I'll probably read them soon. And they're just really solid books and really fun to read. So make sure you guys check it out. Next coming in at number four, Paper Towns. This one was at one point my favorite book um, by John Green. Uh, but then I reread all of it and I realized I was wrong and that's my bad. The chapters are kind of long in this book, so make sure you guys are aware that like, if you're going to sit down for a chapter, it's going to take you a bit. But this is the cover here. Um, it's a really interesting cover because this is like a plastic feel, but like, like you can see like the tension dragging. And this is like a map feel. It's really interesting. But it follows a bunch of characters along as they try to figure out what happened to, I believe her name was Margo. Um, it's got to be Margo. Um, yeah, Margo. And Margo basically disappears, and they're trying to figure out what happened and where she went, and eventually they track her down using a map and all that stuff, and uh, it's interesting. It really is good. It's a really good book. Uh, the text is pretty large, too, which is nice. Um, it's a really solid novel. Lots of comedy. This is probably his uh, most, well, his second most um, funniest novel, and it really is a lot of fun. I love this book. It's really, really good, and I, you all should, you all should read it. It really is good. The movie is not great. It's fun, but it's not. It doesn't quite capture what this book was trying to do. Um, but you should check out the movie and the book. I'll be watching the movie at some point. I'm sure on the channel at some point. Um, but it's a really, really good book. Make sure you guys check it out. I really do like it a lot. Um, it's a fun read. Coming in at number three, this also might surprise a lot of you. Because some of you will probably think it's my first, my, my first favorite, but it's not. The Fault in Our Stars. This has never been my favorite book by John Green, believe it or not. It just, it isn't, and it's, I, I like it a lot, and it's not, essentially it's about this girl who has cancer and this guy who uh, also has cancer, and it's about, like, who lives and who dies, and how do you decide that, and how do you figure out how, can you love somebody if you know you're going to die soon? And it's, it's all about love and the issues with it. Um, and basically it's about infinities and how some infinities are, are longer than other infinities. It makes you sad. It makes you want to cry. It really does. I love this book. Um, it's really good. It's never been my favorite, um, but it's definitely one that you go back to and you read a lot because you love Hazel and, and you love Hazel's boyfriend that I can't remember the name of, but it's, it's good. Um, it's a really, really fun book. It's got a lot of comedy in it, even though it's about cancer and death. Uh, you can tell it's my earliest book, and it's kind of gross. Um, uh, this is the first book by John Green that I bought. It's not the first one I read, but it's the first one I bought um, physically, but it's it really is a good book. Make sure you check it out if you haven't. I'm sure most of you have read The Fault in Our Stars. It's really good. Um, it's a really fun read. Two more to go, and this might surprise you. It surprised me a little bit, because honestly, I thought it was reversed, but coming in at number two, Will Grayson, Will Grayson. I love this book. I want you to know that if I could have two number ones, this would be number one with our, our number one pick. But it, I can't because it's not right. Essentially, it follows two people named Will Grayson, Will Grayson, who are very different. One is a closeted gay who's trying to figure out his life. And one is a straight person. And they bump into each other. By Miraculously, they bump into each other. And they meet, and they get to know each other. And they have this weird back and forth. And then there's a character named Tiny, who's gay and amazing. And it surrounds this musical that Tiny's writing. And, like, this is the, um... Oh, wow, that was a bad voice point. This is the David Levithan thing, where um, it's all lowercase. And uh, it's, like, the dialogue is really interesting. And, like, almost like a type. Um, it's really interesting. It's really fun. I definitely would recommend reading this if you haven't yet. It is not only my, like my second favorite John Green book of all time, it is one of my favorite books of all time. It is so good, so funny, and so original and heartfelt. Um, it's also an LGBTQ book, and I love those books. And it really is something to behold. It's... I love it. Which means coming in at number one, we have Looking for Alaska. Which, if you see here, I'm lucky enough to have an advanced reading copy of, because my library was giving away for a dollar, and I was like, wow, they really don't know what they're doing then. Um, and it's in bad condition, too. Like, there's this page that just kind of falls out, um, which is sad, but... <clears throat> it's still it's still in a condition, though, which is nice. Do I have a 
bookmark in here as well. I do. I have a bookmark in here. There's a little a nice part. Um, essentially, this follows uh, a few people who all have nicknames, and they go to this camp or college. It's a college, but it feels more like a camp than a college. And they meet Alaska, and Alaska is the most attractive woman that uh, uh, Slim is a Pudge that Pudge has ever seen. And essentially, what happens was well, really Miss Miles. Um, but essentially, what happens is there's a mystery in the middle of the book that happens to Alaska. And Miles is trying to figure out what's happening. And this is a slight spoiler, if you haven't seen it yet, a slight spoiler. Um, what happens in the middle of the book is Alaska dies. And Miles is trying to figure it out. She, he's like, is it a suicide or was it a murder? And it, to what extent does that matter? To what extent does it make a difference if it was suicide or murder? And it's all about that. And it's, it's, it honestly is the most touching, loving book in the freaking world and I lost my mind and like once I got to this page I started bawling I was like no like you know what happens you know that she died right there you're like oh god this is gonna be a rough rest of the book and it is such a perfect book I love it every time I read it I read it a lot I really do which is why it's not really the best condition I need to get a different copy so that way I don't have to touch this one um, but I would 100% recommend checking this out. This is also his first novel, which means I have an advanced reader's copy of his first novel, which is insane. Um, but it really is one of the best books of all time. One of the best books you'll ever see in terms of, of love and death and, and coming of age. And John Green is the best author. He's one of the best authors in the world. I love him to death. I hope I meet him one day so I can just say thank you for making my life better with all these great books. Um, I love them so much. They are basically my Bibles. The only book that I have read more than those books, uh, maybe besides Harry Potter, of course, is uh, The Perks of Being a Wallflower, which I'll, I'm sure I'll talk about it on the channel at some point. I do have a review for that movie, um, but the book is my Bible. I read it every year. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys love these books, let me know in the comments down below. Please let me know what you've read, what you didn't read, what you like about them, what, what's your ranks. I want to know. Let me know in the comments below. It's, it's really fun for me to read those. Uh, please consider subscribing if you want more of these. My next Robert's Ranked review, my Robert's Ranked episode, will be Steve Carell and then Leonardo DiCaprio. I'm going to do a Percy Jackson one, and I'm going to do a Heroes of Olympus one, a Harry Potter one. So make sure you guys are following along, because I really love this. I'm having a lot, a lot of fun filming these videos. But thank you all so much, and as always, keep watching movies and television. Stay educated, and I'll see you guys in the next video.